Renaissance Technologies, otherwise known as Rentech, is the greatest hedge fund of all time. Founded by math genius Jim Simons in 1988, over 30 years later, its flagship fund medallion has gross returns of around 66.1% and net returns after fees of 39.1%. The medallion fund is open only to current and former employees and their families and closed to outside investors in 1993. Since 1988, the medallion fund has racked up trading profits of more than $100 billion. Now, to make us all feel terrible, if you had have invested $1,000 into the medallion fund in 1988, you would have today, after fees, around $23 million. So that certainly beats inflation. Now, of course, having a net return of 39.1% for 30 years annualized net of fees is pretty impressive, but the fees are higher than usual as well. We can see here some of the incredible returns over the years. Notice in particular the return in 2007 and 2008, a time where many were completely wrecked. In 2008, a return after these monstrous fees of 82.4%. So how did they do it and what can we take away from this story, aside from searing jealousy of course? I was, I was jealous of Seth. I could, oh, it have been an amazing year to do it. I mean, it'd been the end of my career, but who cares? Again, <laughs> we all die. Yeah, we all die. Now, Simons always had the goal of algorithmic trading. Remember, this was the late 1980s, a time in which most investment decisions were made over the phone using your gut, with people like Jordan Belfort trying to scam you. I don't want to have to worry about the market every minute. I want models that will make money while I sleep, Simon said. A pure system without humans interfering. Simons then hired Sandor Strauss to help him collect historical commodity information. Strauss was essential to Rentec's early success in commodities trading. He became somewhat of a data guru, ensuring pricing was consistent and accurate. Checking his numbers match with yearbook data provided by commodity exchanges, the Wall Street Journal, other newspapers and anything else he could get his hands on. Over time, Strauss and his other colleagues collected additional historical pricing data and this helped them to develop new models. In fact, some of the stock market data they'd later find went back as far as the 1800s. Now, the team couldn't do much with the data at the time. However, it proved very useful, as it allowed them to look throughout modern history to see what the reaction was like by the market to historical events, such as market crashes or black swan events even. And the return in 2008 is a prime example of how they were able to essentially build models to profit from said events. Now at the time the commodities markets were relatively simple and Simons was able to deploy some pretty basic trading methods. For example, they looked at recurring trading sequences based on the day of the week. Monday's price action often followed Fridays, while Tuesday saw reversions to earlier trends. The medallion model made use of the so-called weekend effect, which involved buying late on a Friday if a clear uptrend existed and then selling early on a Monday for example. Now, it's important to emphasize the fact that the opportunities exploited by Rentec in these commodity markets in the 80s and 90s are likely no longer around now, which is why former employees talk about them. Now, the fund wasn't particularly bothered as to why certain trading patterns existed. It was more bothered that they occurred in a predictable and actionable way. Now, in order to build these quantitative models, Rentec is composed of mathematicians and physicists of the highest order and it has even been described as the best math department in the world. The secret sauce was really, in the first instance, having very smart people working for the firm. We, we were academics ourselves. We had an idea of who was a good scientist and who wasn't, and we brought in and continued to bring in excellent people, not just mathematicians, but uh, computer scientists, statisticians, uh, experimental physicists, uh, uh, astronomers. We got four or five astronomers. Therefore, their quantitative researchers are well aware of the problems with data mining, overfitting, and backtesting data accurately. And we are talking about a lot of data. We built a terrific infrastructure. The computer guys are wonderful. Uh, so we take in, uh, I think it takes in uh, nine, nine terabytes a day of data comes into that outfit. And it all gets stored and organized and, and, and dished up to the researchers and so on. So it's a great infrastructure. Rentec originally focused on trading commodities, futures, and currencies. The strategies were mainly trending, i.e., the price will continue to move in the same direction, and mean reversion. So the price will return to its original value. Simons had been experimenting with the stock market, i.e., equities, since the late 1980s, but he found that the model, which worked really well for the futures market, 
was not working on equities. In 1995, David Magaman, an early employee, spotted a line of simulation code used for the equity trading system showing the S&P 500 at an unusually low level. This test code appeared to use a figure from back in 1991 that was roughly half the current number. It had been written as a static figure, rather than as a variable that updated with each move in the market. Magaman also spotted an algebraic error elsewhere in the code. Thanks to this, the simulator's algorithms could finally recommend an idea portfolio for the trading system to execute. The resulting portfolio seemed to generate big profits, at least according to Magaman's calculations. Only then did Renaissance commit significant capital into the equity markets. And since then, well, pretty good. As I mentioned before, the sheer amount of data that Rentech is working with is truly remarkable. Big data has obviously caught on, but many hedge funds continue to underperform the market, and even some hedge funds focused on quant methods haven't fared too well either. The problem, and one of the reasons why Rentech is so special, is that the barrier to entry is just so incredibly high. Building a data pipeline and the infrastructure required to process that data is no trivial matter. To then get profitable trading signals from that processed data is a mammoth task. Rentech has been in the game for over 30 years, constantly refining their algorithms and improving the efficiency of their data processing pipeline. They have completely automated the process of signal discovery. They don't hire researchers to manually derive novel insights or trading models from data, and they don't really bother with exclusive sources of data. Instead, they hire researchers to improve methods for automatically processing vast amounts of arbitrary data and extracting profitable trading signals from it. When most funds say they're quantitative, what they really mean is that they use huge amounts of data to inform fundamentally manual trading strategies. And this includes most of the places widely considered to be the top firms. They develop trading algorithms and those trading algorithms are often successful, but the algorithms are developed manually and then deployed. Their researchers and engineers actively try to seek out new sources of data and try to compete on novel sources of untapped information. But the reality of what happens is that they simply drown in the data. They can't clean it or process it nearly fast enough to maintain long-term trading strategies, nor can they even begin to find a way to automate the trading strategy extraction. If you're working with hundreds of terabytes of data, you cannot selectively formulate hypotheses and test them. It's far too slow. You will find dramatically far fewer novel insights than a fully automated process. In other words, they're a step above traditional fundamental hedge funds, but they focus on the wrong problem. In contrast, the truly successful quant funds like Rentec have automated the data processing and feature extraction pipeline end to end. The data is a pure abstraction for them. They don't bother with forming hypotheses and trying to find data to test them. They allow their algorithms to actively discover new correlations from the ground up. So many quantitative hedge funds advertise how much data they work with and how they have all these exotic sources of data at their disposal. But the data does not matter. The models for the data do not matter. The mathematics of efficiently processing that data are what matters. As a result of their consistent profitability, most of the jobs listed for the really successful quant hedge funds, if they even have a website, are not real in the strictest sense of the word. You can apply to them, but they only keep active careers pages to attract the best researchers. Their only incentive is number one, to keep someone who is actually exceptional from joining a competitor, or number two, keep an academic researcher from rediscovering their work when it seems like they're getting close to it. This is why they primarily focus on quantitative PhDs in information theory, high energy physics, and computational mathematics, especially information geometry. So the conclusion from all of this and what we can take away is do not day trade. You will get completely wrecked. You are competing against intellectual capital of the highest order and infrastructure of immense scale. So do not day trade. And for those selling Forex and day trading courses, I say, you know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God and off. Okay? For more compounded valuable content, subscribe and like.